Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and have no fear free day. If you're new here, my name is M. I'm an endometriosis advocate living in Canada and everything on my channel is related to living life with a chronic condition. In today's video, I thought that we could talk about the new documentary called Below the Belt. It's an endometriosis focused documentary that was directed by Shannon Cohn and executively produced by Hillary Clinton. I thought that we could talk about the documentary and my thoughts around it. I was also given the opportunity to be a panelist following the screening of the documentary here in Ottawa. It happened a couple months ago, but I thought that I would include some videotaped answers that I provided during the event. If that interests you around the documentary, my thoughts, and my panel answers, then feel free to keep on watching. So a little bit about the documentary itself. It's called Below the Belt, and it was directed by Shannon Cohn and executively produced by none other than Hillary Clinton, who we all know. It was an amazing documentary because it focuses on four patients across the United States, as well as one in Canada, on their journey to find answers to mysterious pains and symptoms that they live with on a daily basis. All of their journeys led to a final conclusion that they had endometriosis, but a lot of their journeys were very similar in the sense that they were reaching a societal taboo around periods. I think that hit a heartstring in the audience where I was watching the documentary because a lot of us living with endo had that societal taboo as a first stopping ground to receive answers because either we were complaining too much about period pain or that we were just unlucky because we were women or gender diverse peoples that had painful periods and that was just what it was. So seeing that represented in the documentary first and foremost was, oh, okay, we are all dealing with this. And that was, that was something that I saw first and foremost as an important thing to bring light to, to whoever was watching the documentary, that it's a first obstacle that we all face in an endo journey. All four patients also experienced uh, misinformation and misguidance from medical practitioners and doctors. Um, they really do focus on receiving specialized endometriosis care by an endo specialist in the country that they live in. So it was interesting to see that, again, it was very similar to a lot of our experiences living with endo. It was just interesting to see as well, because I think a lot of us in our endo journeys, we do come across medical gaslighting and saying, you know, it could be irritable bowel syndromes or it could be something totally unrelated to endo. And I think, yes, society is getting better around raising awareness and widespread information around endo, but seeing it represented in this documentary that, you know, individuals, regardless of where they lived in the country or even outside of it, their stories were very similar in the sense of misguidance and misdirection from medical practitioners outside of the specialized care that they needed. There were so many obstacles to get to that specialized care. And sometimes it took a lot of money to get to that specialized care. Sometimes insurance didn't cover it. So some patients that they were following had to pay out of pocket. And then once you get to that specialized care, the amount of surgeries or amount of wait time that is met when you have to get that specialized care. So. It was really eye-opening again to see that it is still a main issue across countries close to Canada as well as in Canada itself. Uh, one of the patients that they do include is Canadian, which is a nice thing to see as a Canadian myself. I think sometimes it, endometriosis in Canada does not get as much awareness and funding as well as every country in the world, but I think Canada specifically is really behind the eight ball when compared to France, Scotland, Australia, and the United States. So seeing a Canadian in the documentary and her journey within the system and how she actually had to fly to the United States to receive care really speaks volumes to what a lot of endo patients in Canada face. When you look at France, Scotland, United Kingdom, or even Australia, they have national action plans for endo and a lot of their political partners are on board. Um, so it was great to see in the documentary that these patients were advocating politically for more awareness and funding and research for endo. So it was a documentary focused on the United States medical system as well as the US political system. But because Canada is so closely linked, although we have different political systems, just the way that you advocate for answers and the drive that patients have to receive proper care and to make it better for those after us that don't know the name to their pain yet or may not have their first endo flare yet. Um, so that was really heartwarming to see at the same time. Generally, like it was an amazing film to watch. I will say that it was hard to watch at times as an endo patient because at the end of a lot of the patient's journeys that they follow, some of them, they still need extra care. So 
it's hard to see that endometriosis, although getting more information, it's still a lifelong chronic condition that the patient has to deal with and it's different for everybody. So what may work for somebody may not work for others. Um, so yeah, def definitely an amazing documentary and I'm so glad that it's out in the public and that society can get a better image of what endometriosis is and the impact it has on the human body. The one thing I will say is that you do have to pay a screening fee to the um, to the group to, to kind of show the documentary to a widespread audience, which makes sense. Um, I do wish it was free to the public to stream or at least um, some portions of the documentary were free. I think if you wanna spread more awareness around endometriosis and gain a larger audience to disseminate information, I think it would be great down the road to have it available in mainstream media like Netflix or um, like on, on a national news outlet and just have a special viewing of it for the public to view. Um, because again, if you do have to pay for it or if it's only viewing in a certain urban cen center, um, it may not be as accessible for those in rural remote areas to gain access to information or to feel like they have a community of support behind their journey as well. So that's the one thing I will say about the documentary. But other than that, it was amazing to see. And I'm so happy that I got the chance to watch it. I was also invited in Ottawa to be a panelist following the screening of the documentary. So I did have to wipe away some tears and some uh, compose myself because the documentary was very... Um, hard to watch at times because it did hit so close to home. Um, but I do have some clips around my answers to some questions. Um, it was hosted by the Endometriosis Network of Canada in partnership with EndoAct and the University of Ottawa's Endometriosis Education Fund. I do want to thank Jenna Wren who really put the event together in Ottawa without her uh, and her advocacy to gain uh, the screening rights in Ottawa, like the documentary would not be able to happen in Ottawa. So thanks to Jenna for putting the push to get the event in Ottawa. Here are some questions that I answered as a panelist. If you're wondering why was I invited to be a panelist, um, well, I am a federal lobbyist in Canada. I do a lot of political advocacy at the federal level, so talking to politicians all the time with different clients, so trying to change public policy. So I was invited as a political insight on how to gain uh, more traction and awareness for endometriosis in Canada's political system. So that's a little bit about my background and why I was specifically invited, but I was also joined by a panel of amazing individuals, including Denise Campbell, Elaine Holoka, Tracy Lindemann, and Dr. Sony Singh. So here are my answers to some questions, and I look forward to hearing what you thought about the documentary, if you've seen it in your hometown, in the comments down below. If you haven't seen the trailer for Below the Belt, I'll include the link in my uh, description box below so you can watch that. And hopefully there's a screening coming to you in your town or city that you're in in the future, um, but there are ways to contact the group if you want to get the screening rights and I'll put those down in the description box below as well. Um, yeah, advocacy to me is, uh, you know, I have a political mind always, it's always on. Uh, so I want to stress to you in the, in the room today that there's no right or wrong way to advocate. If you're ready to share your story for endometriosis, that's wonderful and amazing, but some people find that very traumatic to dive into. Um, so if you want to share a social media graphic about endo that has accurate information, that's a way to advocate. Uh, if you want to sign a petition, I know there's one in Ontario right now, that's another silent way to advocate. There's so many ways advocacy means to me, um, and I find it, it's a collaborative sport. Uh, it's really hard and exhausting as a patient to advocate on your own. Uh, so if you have a friend or family member that really wants to help, that uh, really helps the energy level for the, the patient to keep the, the momentum going, and politically wise too, there's room for collaborative sport there as well. Um, so I had normal periods growing up. Uh, I didn't have a first endometriosis flare up until I was in high school. I was walking the high school hallways in the morning and I had a weird pain in my leg. Um, so leg pain was my first symptom of endometriosis. I ended up having a full blown flare up in the middle of my high school hallway and I was wheeled out in a stretcher, which is a great way to make friends and great night. <laughs> um, but it's embarrassing and I didn't know what was happening to my body and I felt ashamed and I felt like, wow, this is a great way to start the rest of my high school career. Um, I thought that my appendix was exploding because I had never heard of endometriosis or that 
periods could be painful. I don't know if anyone else had heard that growing up. <laughs> I wish I did. Um, but the, the barriers we're talking about are lack of awareness growing up, the educational curriculums. I have a family full of teachers and they work really hard, same as nurses. And there's a lack of educational curriculum around period and menstrual health and, and it goes beyond that. But uh, that was my first barrier. When I was trying to find access to care to say, what is this pain? I came across 11 doctors over 12 years that didn't know what I was going through. And I finally found a doctor that believed me. So again, access to family care. We see that in Ontario and across the country. Uh, politically, we, we always advocate for this, but there's a lack of family physicians that keep consistency there. Uh, if you're always going to a walk-in clinic saying the same symptoms and the same story, again, it's exhausting for the patient and it's exhausting when you're trying to find that care. So another barrier that I came across. The final barrier right now recently was that I was put on a, a progesterone dominant pill that put me on forced menopause um, and I suffered severe mental health uh, issues and I you know, suffered depression and suicidal thoughts during a pandemic. So you don't know if it's the medication or if you're under lockdown <laughs> for three plus years. So there was a consistent turmoil in my journey. Um, I got off the medication and, and became pregnant and you know, I do have a, a daughter now, but that, that light was not really there. And that continues in a lot of individuals' journeys with endometriosis. Uh, briefly on the endo community, there's a stat in Australia that had statistics that in the workforce, so again, barriers outside of the healthcare system, um, trying to find uh, support and there's a lack of that and one in three individuals that were studied um, took unpaid leave uh, to get that care for the management of their endometriosis and one in six were actually let go. So I'm sure <laughs> the Canadian context might be there but lack of funding and awareness and research politically is an issue and we don't have that data nationally. So how can we address an issue when we don't know it exists? Mm -hmm. So that's it. Federally, we're doing a real push on national awareness, so a national action plan for endometriosis. Uh, we've met with politicians still into this week, even yesterday. Uh, we're getting traction. There's a motion put forward for a national action plan. So every step in the right direction is towards more awareness for endometriosis, and we're doing that. But it doesn't stop outside of this, or it doesn't stop in this room. It, it continues outside of this room. So I guess the call to action to all of you here, like don't let this kind of die today and don't let what you hear stand still. Like we need your support and, and writing your MP and writing your MLAs and telling your story or your friend's story or your daughter, or whoever it may be, uh, share the stories and keep, keep momentum and keep traction because that's how we create change where someone in Saskatoon doesn't have to go to the States to get care. Absolutely. Oh, and sign the petition for Ontario. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free again to comment down below on what you thought about the trailer and if you've seen it and your thoughts on it. I'd love to hear it. I uh, can't wait to talk to you on the next one. Bye.